Uh, good morning YouTube. Uh, I'm gonna do a video on my 2014 Ram 1500 Eco Diesel. Uh, this truck, if you've been following me, you've uh, been paying attention to my some of my modifications that I made to this truck. Uh, one of them today I'm gonna show you um, something I've been working on. Something that I think has needed to be done. So, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to reveal what I believe is the very first uh, actively working and corrective, correctively functioning, correctly functioning um, CCV mod uh, anywhere in the world. I've searched high and low, read a lot of forums, done a lot of research, and... I have not seen anybody that's been able to put an oil separation kit on their eco diesel, whether it be the Jeep or the pickup truck version, without getting a check engine light. Uh, I've ran 5,000 miles without having a check engine light now. Um, I understand what the uh, principle and um, how to make the system work correctly, and I'm going to show you um, how I've done it. And this is the trick right here. I did do it with a BMW oil separation system. However, the plastic, uh, the CC, CFCs in the oil broke down the plastic and cracked it and broke it. It wasn't very reliable. It leaked. So what we're going to do is I'm going to pull the cover off and show you what you're going to do. Uh, please note that I've done several mods on this truck and uh, anybody else's install would be a lot cleaner than mine. I did apply my CNG system knowledge to this and some of my parts to use for CNG systems. So the first thing you do is you pull this cover off and your factory line is going to be right here and you're going to see a little uh, you're going to have this in your factory line right there. Uh, that's, that is in your truck already whether it's a Jeep or the pickup truck. So from right there to here, I have a hose that goes into this Moroso billet aluminum oil separator. These are push lock fittings, so you don't need hose clamps. They hold 350 PSI without leaking. Uh, this here, this is a PCV uh, attachment you can buy at AutoZone in your help section that I used. I got rid of the factory. Um, elbow there it did leak the factory system will leak right here it's not a very good system so eventually whether you do this mod or not it will leak so it comes up bends right in here comes right in to this side and goes out to the other side and inside this is a dual chamber baffled system with a, uh, a stainless steel mesh and a steel grate uh, this does come in two pieces and can be cleaned and um, it does have a drain down here with um, a uh, feature where you can attach a hose and have it go into a separate container or you can run the hose out. Um, but this is a very, very high quality system. Now, if you just install this, no matter what way you do it, um, no matter what system you use, no matter how much money you spend on your oil separator, if you just hook it up like this, uh, you will get a check engine light and uh, I'll show you what the trick was. <clears throat> there are two sensors in this system. One is right here. This is your map sensor. And then there's also a sensor up there where this line goes in. And there are predetermined values that are programmed from the factory. This It reads barometric pressure, RPM, engine temperature, and there's also a temperature sensor and a float, which basically also uh, measures flow and particle count in this hose here uh, and temperature. So these readings are met, are predetermined in the factory map and you cannot manipulate these electronically or by putting in resistors or anything. Um, so what you have to do is you have to duplicate that and replicate that flow uh, and your flow will be interrupted uh, when you put this in. So uh, what the problem is is uh, this reads based on um, 
a progressive as boost increases your flow is going to increase because your pressure increases from your oil blow by or your crankcase blow by uh, naturally so you need some way to naturally increase the flow through the secondary line to make up for the loss that you are intercepting and interfering with here uh, there are two codes that you're going to get, a P04DB and a P051B. The P051B is a kind of scary code. That is a pressure in your crankcase, and if you uh, ignore that or neglect that, you're going to blow seals out. And uh, 4 PSI is the blowout pressure. You can measure that on your dipstick tube in a pressure gauge. The system normally runs between 2 and 3 PSI, but 4 will blow your seals out. Uh, so I do know what the pressures are and, and what they'll give you a problem at. Uh, no, I don't have any leaks. I've been doing this mod since uh, 8,000 miles, so I've got 35 on it right now. Uh, so what happened was uh, this: these are nozzles. They're fuel injector nozzles that you use in CNG and propane to mount into your intake manifold. What I did is I drilled and tapped and mounted one here in your uh, intake tube. And I also drilled and tapped one right there in the back side of this. And what happens is as the boost and the pressure in the RPM increase, so does the pressure coming through this line. It's about 27 PSI max. And uh, so it naturally will also create a venturi effect in vacuum and su help suck some of this um, the vapors and fumes through here. And... Uh, provide the correct ratio and the correct performance that it's supposed to normally have. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I, I can't stop draining this, these things. I've got a problem doing it. So I'm going to show you what uh, active drain is going to look like. Hopefully I can get a good angle on it. So that's the best I can do. So I'm going to take this clean glass. There's nothing in it. I'm going to come over here, remove the orange plug. Okay, so this is a day of use. I was going to do this test after a week, but yeah, my engine's clean, pretty, it all works. All right, I'm going to turn the valve. Okay, so here it goes, it's leaking out. Let's show you what I get out of a day. All right, so it's dripping out a little bit. Okay, so let that sit for a second. So I'll put that right here. I gotta go get a rag, wipe this off. Uh, there you go. I'm gonna wipe my hand off. Alright, so something you might be asking yourself is, uh, does this mod apply to me? Does this apply to my vehicle? Is my vehicle just a piece of crap and that's why I'm getting this much oil out? Uh, no, the question, is, the answer is, every vehicle has blow-by. The higher the compression ratio and the more boost that is applied, um, you're going to have a certain amount of blow-by. Every engine will be different. Some will have more, some will have less. It depends on your temperature and the type of oil that that you use in the viscosity um, and the rings, how much your rings are wearing out. Uh, but I've been pulling this much out uh, depending on how good the separator is. Uh, the better the separator, the more oil I'm separating. 
Okay, so this is a lot of oil. So this is um, this is a day, which is uh, one tank of my fuel. Okay, so that's that's quite a bit. That's in the bottom of this mason jar. So if you've been following my videos, you could see that I was kind of upset with um, a sludge and metal problem. I did go and get some oil analysis done on it and um, came back as a lot of metal. I mean, it was big chunks of metal, brass. It came back as a bearing that was in it, what was in it. Um, it was dissected as a bearing failure. Um, so I hope you can see with the light. This was a live sample that I pulled. Uh, you can see that there is no oil sludge and there's no metal. Is that air? Okay, so I got a piece of the material from the filter in there at the bottom. Okay, but you can see there's no brass chunks, there's no uh, aluminum chunks, no tin. That's what they pulled out. And also there's no sludge. Uh, something that concerned me was the amount of sludge that I got out. Uh, the sludge and the metal I didn't want to have recirculated into my uh, turbo. So, see before without this, um, there's nothing stopping the metal, the chunks, the metal chunks, the uh, sludge, whatever kind of contaminants or any kind of breakdown material you're going to get in your engine from going right into the turbo, hitting the turbo blade, coming through this line. Now, I hope you can see that with this much oil, that's going to eventually fill my intercooler up. And it will yours too, whether you have an eco diesel uh, in the pickup truck or in the Jeep. This is going to start filling up your intercooler. And once it gets to a certain point it is just going to keep on coming through and it's going to hit your throttle body here and come in and it's going to start clogging up and coking up your EGR which is over here uh, under that sock and also your intake valves are going to start getting sooted up and uh, you're going to start blowing by see this is not f ignitable your, your engine's not going to burn this off and use this as a fuel all right. Also, the metal particles and the sludge is going to go in and it's going to start wearing out your valves and your rings on your upper cylinders, which is going to increase your blow by even more. So this engine's going to accelerate the wear. Uh, now, most people are not really worried about that because they're going to lease or um, trade it in at uh, 30 to 80,000 miles like most people do. But I drive a lot of miles. I've already got 35,000 miles on it and I bought it in the end of June. So uh, this is gonna this oil blow by what doesn't get burned in the engine is gonna go past your valves and it will go out and start coating the top surface of your SCR, which is basically a catalytic converter. So over here, all right. So this is this is what your SCR is, okay. And inside of here is a honeycomb material, a honeycomb mesh, okay, and. You see those really, really fine honeycomb? So when it's brand new, it's good. However, normal diesel usage will start to coat that up and clog those little, little bit holes off, which eventually will uh, reduce your engine performance and uh, it will increase your, uh, your regen rate. You'll hit your active three, which is uh, your third stage, your final stage of your regen if uh, the problem is getting too bad. I've never hit number three. I've only been in number one and number two regen, but I've never had the display pop up where it's in emergency cleaning mode. Um, you're normally gonna use a lot more DPF fluid. Uh, when you start consuming oil like this, when oil starts going through, so this much oil per day this keeps my regen rate. I've uh, my active two regen. I've eliminated two cycles per night, and how I know what it is, I have a computer that uh, tells me what how many regens I'm hitting, completing. Um, so this is a follow-up video, and uh, 
as far as what I can see anywhere uh, else in the world, I think I'm the first person to get a separator that is separating uh, this good without any check engine lights and looks factory. And the reason why I say factory is because right here is your vacuum pump. Uh, you see that little thing right there? And if you look at this, it looks exactly the same. It is also mounted to the same bolt that mounts it. It's using the factory Moroso bracket. This came in the kit. All you did was just took your 10 millimeter socket, you unscrewed this bracket or this bolt, placed the Moroso bracket right in there. No modifications. Look at that. Nice and clean. Your factory vacuum hose will route right there. Look at that. Nice, clean, tight. Looks factory. Same materials. It's all aluminum. Same size, same shape, same bracket. Nice and tight. This, uh, this install took me, the, the hardest part was pulling this uh, tube off and uh, cleaning it back out with the shavings, putting something over it. Uh, this was the longest part was drilling and tapping that and drilling and tapping the other thing. But otherwise, you'd have this all done in one hour. Uh, it's really nice and easy. Um, so how do you know if this is going to apply to you? So maybe you think I'm just being retarded, or maybe you think that I've got a shitty truck. Well, let me show you. So what you're going to do is, with your truck running, with your oil temperature above 200 degrees, which is normal operating, you pull this cap off, and if you start seeing smoke popping up, uh, there's your first indication that you have oil blow-by, which you do. All right, your second step is you pull this cover up and this actual factory connector is actually just a quick connector and it spreads apart you pull your hose up with the engine running uh, don't rev it up but just with it idling uh, if oil is squirting out which it will and if you see a bunch of smoke and steam coming out uh, that's your second guess you're gonna need one all right so the th third step of denial if you still don't think you need it Undo this hose clamp right here. It's just a flat-headed screwdriver. And then pull this hose up. That's all you gotta do, pull that hose up. If inside of this hose is completely soaked and dripping oil and you're running oil out of it, uh, there you go. That's your final indication that you're gonna need some kind of oil separation unit. Uh, some of the more advanced technicians in the diesel field that actually rebuild, tear down and rebuild the emission system and clean and the intake valves, EGR, and the turbo vanes on the VNT turbos, especially like the Fords and the uh, Volkswagen TDIs, which this is pretty much the same thing as a TDI engine, uh, they'll, they'll already tell you about the importance of oil separation. It's just not something you want in your engine. I don't know why this engine doesn't have this already built in, but what I was surprised about was how well this Moroso separator is doing so i'll show you what the part number was on this because of this being a factory direct look this is not touching that radiator hose so nothing is interfering i mean this looks completely factory uh, it was very easy to install and um yeah it's just been reliable as heck I mean, it's, there's there's nothing that'll trip this check engine light. You can drop floor it, you can put a trailer on, you can put 10,000 pounds in the trailer and pull Parley's Canyon all night long. I've never reset my codes. I've got about 5,000 miles on my uh, last reset counter. So no pending or active codes, which are the two codes that would pop up. So I'm very happy with that. I think I'm the first person anywhere in the world to do that. I'm not the first person to attempt it, but I am pretty sure I'm the first person to successfully do it without a check engine light. So, all right. So here we go. This is the. Uh, some racing that is the part number right there, MOR-85485. 
Uh, it was $158. Uh, you can see that I bought this myself. Um, so there you go. This is not... I'm not sponsored by Moroso. They didn't pay me for this. They're not reimbursing me for this. This was um, all done by me. Uh, you can see my... Uh, these are my codes. That was my vacuum. So, yeah, I was doing quite a bit of work trying to figure that out. But I'm all done now. Oh, and just so you know, this is, a, this is the fluid you need for your transmission in your truck. That's the factory part number right there. All right, so that's it. Hope you enjoy it. Thanks. All right, so this is a drain can test that I've put on here. And uh, I was getting sick and tired of draining this uh, catch container every single day. Because what would happen is uh, when the container would get to a certain level, it would just stop working. So I installed this drain can, this makeshift drain can. And I'm going to drain it right here and see how much oil is in it. All right, so this is after one week. This is one week of my driving. Let's see just how effective this was. So this is just a temporary thing that I did. Alright, so my metal contamination is virtually gone. So the difference is what I've done is I put Lucas in there, and if I put Lucas in there, I just don't get any sludge or metal at all. No sludge, no metal. So this is one full week. Uh, this is with the dealer oil again, with Lucas right away. Uh, Lucas full synthetic. So before when I did this test with the same exact dealer oil, the Euro oil, without Lucas, I would get sludge and metal chunks, which I was upset with before. But as you can see right here in the sunlight, there's no metal chunks. This is another week and uh, no sludge. So uh, you can see a little bit of brass, but that's going to be normal. A little bit of metal will be normal, but the amounts that I had before was very substantial. <clears throat> so this was just a test thing. I've got a really cool new design coming out with this. Now, I'm not making any money on this. It's just uh, something that I've got to do for myself, so I'm sharing it anyway with people. <clears throat> so this is uh, one week of my oil. And this is a fresh oil change. This uh, uh, this this oil has uh, 5,000 miles on it. So you can see what comes out of here is nastier than what comes out of the engine crankcase. But that's this is one week. Um, I drive 10,000 miles a month. So uh, times this by four, and that's pretty average. Now, when the outside temperatures are hotter, I get a lot more, probably twice as much. But it's been really cold. It's been 15 to 30 degrees. So you can see I'm getting less out of it. Uh, but yeah, when the ambient temperature is really, really hot outside, like when we're up in the 80s and the 90s and the 100s, I can dang near fill this thing completely up. 
in one week. So the temperature alone has dropped it down that much. So this is just a little quick update. This is Sean at MoparEcoDiesel.com and this is my final video, my final update on my catch can mod that I've done. Uh, what you see here is this is a little $15 um, catch can that's made in China that I got off of eBay. Now this is not a separator. This is that's not what I bought this for. Um, this is just a drain tank. So you see what I did was this is using all their parts. So you see my Moroso separator up there, and then you see the drain hose coming down. And this is a crappy hose, but it doesn't matter because this is just a drain. And when you start the truck, this gets pressurized. This hose will get pressurized with about up to 3 PSI. So that doesn't really matter. Um, so you see I had to, it's, this is really poor quality, so I had to put some glue in there and seal it up and put some O-rings up there. But I blocked that side off and just have this one hose coming in here. So I'll have a level. Um, what I found out was the Moroso separator starts losing efficiency right when it starts to get, you know, about that much oil in the bottom. So the best thing to do is to leave the little valve open down there, let it drain down into another tank. And this tank should last me an oil change. And then I can just drain the oil off here on doing this little drain here, you know, putting another can under it. But this is you know my final update this is what I found to make this uh, system work really well so your total investment will be about two hundred dollars to do it right and you see that I've drilled it in there it's really rock steady it won't move so and you see that it's not in the way it's nice and easy you can uh, you know maintain it really nice and leave this maintenance free so that's all out of the way so uh, thanks for watching